Give it up for Dasha and Anna from the Red Scare Podcast. <laughs> Cleveland, what the fuck is up? This, this city, my favorite fact that I've just learned about Cleveland is that a councilwoman uh, has issued a travel advisory, not for Syria, but for East Cleveland. <laughs> there is a travel advisory currently for the eastern half of this city because there are so many police chases. This is a fact. <laughs> COVID is like number seven of what's right. destroying. There is so <laughs> COVID hit here 30 years ago. Uh, there are so many police chases, it's fucking up the traffic. Like people are getting in accidents mm. because cops are just ramming fucking pedestrians on their way to apprehend a murderer. Or something like that. Terrifying. You've never been to a place like this. Never. I'm a sweet West Texas boy. Yeah, he's never been to this place. Every I've been here five years in a row because <laughs> comedy is good here. Yeah. Comedy is very good here. Comedy is always good in places where people do not have hope. Mm. <clears throat> this is a fact. In places where, as the great Chris Hedges would say, people fetishize hope. Mm. Comedy, my comedy is tough. But here, I mean, this restaurant, and it's lovely, is the nicest place in Cleveland. This is it. By far. This is it. I mean, rotisserie chicken, that's it. That's the best mm. you're going to do mm. in Cleveland. Yeah. You get a fried pickle. The food here is puzzling to me. The Polish boy sandwich, which is a guy in the back. What do you mean, come on? They come on. It's a, what is it, kielbasa, french fries, barbecue sauce, and uh, coleslaw. Right? Is that what it is? I mean. He doesn't even know. Whatever said, Woody so. Allen did <laughs> is not as bad as that. <laughs> Let's just say that right now. I don't care what allegations come out about Woody Allen. Who I'm, the tide is turning. Rogan texted me today, the tide yeah. is turning for Woody. Really? That's what Rogan said. What's the evidence? He also said water cured COVID, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's like the movie Signs, ma'am. It's water. Yep. That's what it is. It's M. Night Shyamalan, ma'am. Let's throw water on it, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I've done it eight times. If he doesn't have me back, it is what it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> burn the bridges after you've crossed them multiple times. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's uh, it, Woody. I, did you see the first episode? Yeah. Put the whole family in jail. Everyone, Mia, that God, she has a God complex. You don't adopt 17 children from war-torn countries if you don't expect some of them to get fucked. <laughs> She's importing Taiwanese ladyboys for her perv husband. <laughs> She's not even adopting regular kids. She's adopting sex dolls from a UN human trafficking list. <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep looking at him if he's gonna cut our mics. But it's so it's so crazy. I want them all in jail. I want Mia in jail. Mm. Is she even Asian? She looks so weird. I don't know. Man. What is her race? It's troubling. What is Mia Farrow's race? I don't know. I don't know. I want to know. She's Irish? She's supposed to be Irish. Supposed she to be, looks yeah. like a banshee, like an old Irish banshee. Yeah. And she just adopted those fucking kids. And, and I think they should all just be put away, all of them in jail. Moses, that little fucking Harry Potter. Yeah. The little Woody Allen guy. Mm -hmm. I hope Moses is accused of something soon. 
Because Moses is defending Woody Allen hardcore. He is? Yeah, Moses is out right now going, that's my fucking bro. Nice. Don't he, fucking. He took me fishing. Yeah, yeah he yeah, took he, me fishing. Yeah. He was, gave me, he got, bought me a pair of glasses. <laughs> Gives a fuck who he <laughs> fucked. He married my sister. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> Moses, you got to throw that in. You got to be like, hey, he fucking married my sister. Who cares? Yeah. He's my dad-ish, kind of, I don't know, didn't live with us, barely saw him. Put Dylan in jail, too, for that fucking hair, that red yeah. hair. Nothing justifies that. I don't care what happened. Mm -mm. I don't care if w fucking, yeah, I don't care what happened. You cannot have blood red hair and be taken seriously. There, I don't feel any sympathy for you sitting there with blood red hair. Mm. And, you know, it's just rough. It, here's the thing with Dylan, and this is like me. I was hot as a kid, legit. <laughs> Let me be very careful about how I phrase my issue here with Dylan Farrow. Do you see where I'm going here? If I was talking about getting molested now, you'd go, I don't know. <laughs> see what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if I was a kid, that's why they keep having to show Dylan as a kid. Because HBO's a little pedo weird, too. They're like, no, but remember, she w did look like this. <laughs> like, because Dylan's she like, he would just take me to the fucking attic. And <laughs> HBO's like, okay, let's edit in because it's not believable. <laughs> At this juncture, it is yeah. very, I mean, she looks like she lives here. You know, <laughs> like, it's not... I'm sorry, but she does. It's a shitty if place. If you saw Dylan Farrow <laughs> fucking serving beer cheese pretzels <laughs> or whatever people eat here. Half the city's a hospital. That's the other thing I love about Cleveland. Mm. Literally half the city's a clinic. Half the entire city is a fucking clinic. People just, I walked into a restaurant once, people just getting EKGs. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought this was the ground round, but apparently it's not. But Dylan, Dylan has a problem that I have. We mm. did not age into our sex appeal. We didn't. That's okay. But when you're describing those events, you know, it's a little like, we're like, her? Because everybody's kind of doing that. Everyone's like, wait mm. a minute, her? Really? I hope it all works out. But HBO fucked up because they're releasing it, what is it, once a week? It looks like once a week, which it's Who like. Who the fuck? Yeah. Here's the thing with pedophile documentaries. I know a little bit about them. <laughs> I know a little bit about pedophile that You gotta binge it. You gotta get in and out. <laughs> you gotta get in and out mm -hmm. of a good pedophile doc. You can't be waiting, cause then you seem like a creep. If you're waiting for the next installment, like you seem like a freak. If yeah. you're out to lunch, you turn around and you go, you know what I'm really uh, waiting for? <laughs> I'm waiting for the next installment of the Woody Allen doc. I think this time he fucks her. <laughs> I'm waiting for that, baby. Yeah. Give it to me. You can't do that. You can't have four watch parties. You can't have Fresh. four Woody <laughs> Allen watch parties. Get a hero. Come to the house. This is the episode where they go to the attic, okay? I'm getting the cake. A cassada cake. The, uh, which is good, it's a Cleveland cake. It has um, very dry uh, angel food cake that's old, and, <laughs> and a strawberry-ish jelly and whipped cream. So it's- Lovely. It's lovely, no, it's, <laughs> it is top of the line. But you know, but I hope, hey man, I hope, I hope Woody makes it out okay. I have mm. no, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, you know? I mean, I hope he didn't do it. Yeah, mostly <laughs> that. <laughs> Goes without saying. I respect, hope if he didn't, he didn't do, do it. it, I respect Mia and Dylan so fucking much. Yeah. Like, if they're still doing this shit to this fucking guy with HBO cameras on him, and they're still sitting there, and they're still going along, Man, am I fucking like, mm. wow. Mm. I'll know it's bullshit if, if Dylan and Mia start a podcast together. Like, after this is all wrapped. And if they just Dylan and Mia tour. do a podcast about socialism after this. 
Yeah, what's what's the product launch? Yeah, that's song? true. What's the merch line? The Mia Farrow skin cream. Yeah. <laughs> the Mia Farrow. <laughs> I mean, she literally, this is a fact. I don't know if this is a fact, but I saw it. <laughs> she adopted a black daughter, and then she like she's like put a photo out, like, happy birthday, Shakshuka, whatever the daughter's name is. <laughs> It's a brunch dish, but it's something similar. <laughs> Sienna, who cares, you know, Serena Williams. And the point is, I'm just saying I don't know the name. And the point is, supposedly she Googled in order to do that Mia Farrow black daughter to get a photo of the daughter. Really? Yeah, that's what, it, that's what I read the online. <laughs> that she put Mia Farrow black daughter just to find. She has like 30, ch she has too many kids from too many places to keep track of all of her children, ah. you know? But we're bombing <laughs> Syria, so it's going to be good. We're bombing, thank God. Were you getting a little tired of us not mm. bombing Syria? Yeah. I woke up every day feeling like shit because bombs were not dropping on hospitals in Syria. I was so upset. I said, when can we do a fake war mm. with Syria? Mm -hmm. And we're just bombing the shit out of Syria. No one really knows why. I think it's because the Bitcoin story is over. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's literally what happened. Like, AMC stock tanked. Mm -hmm. I lost 18 hunch. The next time I see Dave Portnoy, I'm going to lunge at him when he's reviewing a pizza and bite his fucking neck. He won't have me on that podcast with that TikToker. I've tried to get on like multiple times. Mm -hmm. No. He won't have me on BFFs no. with him and the child that they discuss. <laughs> have you watched that? He does his thing and he says whatever he says and then the kid goes like this. The kid's like, yeah. <laughs> the response to everything Dave says. Dave's like, business is like this. The kid's like, yeah, that's fire. I had dinner with that kid. We all went mm -hmm. out to dinner, and that kid came to dinner, and I was sitting there, and literally, we're all deciding on the appetizers, and you know, he's like sitting there, and he's like, <laughs> and I go, I go, what do you want to eat? And he goes, the calamari is fire. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, this is where it's at, you know? But we're, we're bombing Syria. Mm -hmm. And uh, to I'm send a message, to you know? send a message That's it. to Yemen, yeah, uh, that <laughs> we will continue to let yeah. Saudi Arabia carpet bomb you. <laughs> we don't know why. We don't know why. We're in war. We have no, no idea why. They used to make up reasons mm. to go in. Remember that ISIS, mm. ISIL? Yeah. Remember that? There were different ones. Well, this is the Levant. This is ISIS. There's nothing now. They don't even make up a fake. There were fake things that they tried hard. They'd be like five guys dressed like ninjas <laughs> sawing a guy's head off. And they'd be like, this is why we got to go in here. And I'm like, there's more shit going on in East Cleveland than that. <laughs> go to East Cleveland. Like, there is much more shit going on in East Cleveland than there is in fucking Damascus. But okay, they used to make shit up. Now, they, now you just find out about it on Twitter. And you go, all right, just bombing Syria. <laughs> It's that hypernormalization. Did you see the new Adam Curtis doc? Okay, well, <laughs> let's eliminate that chunk. Uh, it's good, but I'm just sick of his shit too. Yeah. Did you see hypernormalization? He does these good docs. He's like a BBC documentarian, but his whole thing is like, he is the way, why the world looks the way it does. Yeah. And it's like, dude, we get it. Like, we know. Yeah already how it looks. You know, it's like... Do you ever wonder why, how we got here? Yeah. It's like, no, how do how, we get out of yeah. here? <laughs> how did we get to this place where no one believes anything and they never will? <laughs> it's, it's, what are we doing, you know? Do you know why we're in a place where no one can do anything to change anything and we're all sitting around staring at each other? No one trusts anyone and everything is bad. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Do we have a follow-up? <laughs> he just keeps doing that. He keeps yeah. coasting on that, yeah. you know? Hey, man, I just hope the Weinstein brothers have forgiven me. 
I just hope that Brad and Eric. So on Clubhouse, what's happening now? I will mention them every podcast until <laughs> uh, we we get in a full scale war, and they are not ready. Uh, no idea what I will do. No idea. I'm kidding. I like there. I agree with them. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. I hate getting in wars with people I agree with, but we'll do it. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, but. On Clubhouse, which is this app where you, it's an audio only invite app where you, you, people talk to each other in these dumb little rooms and, and you have to get invited into them or whatever. Woke people, like virulently woke people, have come into these rooms and what they're doing, and this is sad, but yeah. a little funny, uh, is they are called, they're like, you have to be asked to be a speaker. So what they're doing is they're calling like w- the wine scenes on stage. On Clubhouse, like inviting them up, and then mm-hmm. they're saying like "fuck you, you're a Jew genesis," right. and then asking him for money. They're like, "Hit my Venmo, <laughs> you white piece of shit." <laughs> Literally, that's what people are doing on Clubhouse now. They're like, "Dude, just just hit my Venmo, mm-hmm. white people. You're not allowed to speak. Just fucking hit my Venmo." And I, some of them are doing it. I guess these fucking cucks. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> some of these fucks are like, "All right, I'll give you nineteen dollars. I'm sorry." <laughs> It's so weird. It's such a weird app because it's all, it's like there's woke people. Mm-hmm. There'll be a room where they'll be like, is Cobra Kai too white? Yeah. <laughs> and then there'll be a room about like Bitcoin. And then there'll be rooms that I do, which are like, I do the serious rooms, the ones that matter. I'll do the rooms like how to become a cancer influencer, you know? <laughs> how to build a brand while in uh, prison for statutory rape. <laughs> I do the ones that matter, the ones that, you know? The alt-right's on there now, by the way. Is the alt-right on there? Yeah. The Thank c- Christ. CPAC let him write in. Thank God. I was getting one. bored. Yeah. QAnon's on there, too. Yeah. Me and Ray did a room the other day, how to be both woke and QAnon. <laughs> we did a room where we go, the, the stunning lack of diversity at the Capitol riot. <laughs> <laughs> Just a sea of white. Uh, not good. I would like to see more. I mean, Ray had a great point. The great Ray Comp said, hey, if you can build, remember when they built the gallows for Pence? They built the gallows outside of Capitol. If you have time to build the gallows, you can put in a wheelchair ramp. <laughs> and you can allow the disabled and differently abled mm-hmm. And and neuro, what's it called with uh, their, uh, with the autistic, which everyone is now? What do they call it? As- uh, Asperger's autistic. No, no, they call it. Is it differently abled or oh. neuro? Intellectually and developmentally disabled. No, neuro neurodivergent. Oh, or neurodivergent. Yes, yes, yes. We need autistic, indigenous cripples. Mm-hmm. Yes. To feel welcome in the Q movement. And I want to invite them to also try to kill (laughs) Nancy Pelosi with a letter opener. (laughs) That's how, remember the quarantine started? Everyone was like, the dolphins are back in the canals. And it ended with a guy in Viking horns (laughs) trying to kill AOC with a pen. I was like, this is a real interesting turn this fucking shit has taken, huh? Remember that dumb fucking thing, that poem in the beginning? The guy's like, we are going to listen to each other. He was talking to his kid online. Yeah, like, it's like a children's book. We're going yeah. to learn how to listen. We're going to learn. Yeah, how did that work out? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's my hope. My hope is that we're able to, uh, but I don't know what's going to happen with that app either. I mean, that app could bomb when everyone gets vaccinated. By the way, they're vaccinating everyone way too quickly. I'm getting very nervous because I don't want to see anyone for a few years Getting, I'm getting a little nervous that Thanksgiving might happen. <laughs> Are you watching Thanksgiving like a hawk? Mm. They're like, we vaccinated 100 people. I'm like, why don't you slow the fuck down? Mm-hmm. How about you not vaccinate a few people? I don't need to see my fucking aunt. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, she is, she is not happy with me. I don't know that I'll ever be able to go to another family event no. now that I have destroyed mm-hmm. that relationship. But everyone in my family secretly was texting me like, dude, yeah. you got her so good. <laughs> That's how you know you're from an Irish family. Everyone's like, it's so good. <laughs> I thought they were calling to disown me. They're like, you nailed that bitch. <laughs> I'm like, she started. Sheath oh, underwear. 
Oh, yeah. Right, we got to do these live. Uh, sheath underwear. It is good. It is good. A lot of the things we advertise, we don't even know what they are before we read the ads. We really have no idea. I remember when we were advertising Monday.com and they got yeah. mad. I'm like, I don't know what it is. I read the whole ad. I go, I don't know what it is. Still, I didn't know what it was. Monday.com. I'm like, I don't know. What is it? Mm. <laughs> They're like, it's a peer-to-peer -peer software. I'm like, what? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> but she's underwear is underwear. It's actually underwear. It's good. It's, uh, it's support. You have the pouch for your penis and balls. And if you're a woman with a penis and balls, or a man with a penis and balls, or you don't identify in the gender binary and you have a penis and balls, or you've added a nice tiny little penis <laughs> and balls that was sculpted out of a vagina, like some flabby, loose vag skin that they made into a little Vienna sausage corkscrew peen, but you're like, fuck yeah, I feel better like this. Or if you've taken a penis and then invert, and I often think of doing this, and just splitting it right down the middle and throwing up the turkey on either side of the leg and, and having a vag, but I still keep my sack. <laughs> Any configuration of 2021 genitalia, sheath underwear, is great. Whether it's a cock or just a flab of fucking beef you want to stick in there, you can do whatever you need. You could swim in them. We, we use them as swimsuits, you know? They're great. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. It's good. You should, uh, the guy's a big comedy fan, which is why I can do this. If you go to sheathunderwear.com, is this the guy who's in the military? Uh, yes, 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 yes. He's this guy man. started an underwear company uh, after he got back from Iraq. So support him. Uh, sheathunderwear.com, use code Tim. <laughs> To save 20% off, if you use code TIM, you save 20% off the underwear. Uh, <laughs> and then this is better help. <laughs> I mean, if you've listened to the show, <laughs> if you have any familiarity with the show, the idea that this company, I mean, truly amazing, <laughs> that they would... <clears throat> Do this ad. We promise to be good for this run of the ad. And I'm being good. You're being I'm, good. I'm You've saying good. I'm shocked yeah. and pleasantly surprised. Yeah. We have a long history. Mm -hmm. We have a long history mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. <laughs> but it's good because what it is is it's counseling. Do you get that? It's counseling when you're sad or when you're mad. Dan has problems. You went to a therapist, right? Dan has problems because problems. Dan graduated college and went, wait a minute, why? Why do I have to leave it, you know? <laughs> Many shitty people in his generation are like, why do the beer pong tournaments have to end? But they do. So he got sad about that. He was sad. And he had to go to a therapist and go, I don't understand what's going on. He had to leave Florida. He had to leave the beach, put on shoes, and be a human being. And it was sad and challenging and new. But during the pandemic, it's hard. I'm not, who cares? No, no I just don't I get off. it. Uh, dinner in the code, I can it's a whole thing. I mean, I love they send the copy, like I don't know what I'm doing. It's when you're sad or mad or anxious or you're in a loveless marriage, you can call betterhelp.com, H-E-L-P. <laughs> betterhelp.com, what's the promo code on the old So this home? I have to read directly. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Tim Dillon Show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. Yay! All right, round one of ads done. BetterHelp. Everybody's talking about Bitcoin. Every unemployed loser that I know is talking about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. The excitement someone has in Bitcoin is directly proportional to literally having nothing else going on in their life. Anyone with anything happening does mm. not need to bring up Bitcoin every three minutes. Are you invested all in the market? I am not. Why? Because I have no money to invest in the markets. But you are. I am, yeah. I'm long on a couple things. Ben thinks he's Warren Buffett. Because <laughs> he has $750. <laughs> After he fucks his wife, she goes to bed and he goes down to his basement and goes on Reddit and just stares at the Dogecoin dog. <laughs> 
for three hours. And yet he's been on Reddit every day for like the last two years, but somehow wasn't on it enough to make me any fucking money when we could have went into GME fucking early. I got on that fucking train late and got thrown the fuck off it. You could have came It to was me. just a meme. I didn't think it was really going to be a revolution. I didn't really think it was going to take off. Well, we could have made some fucking money, dude, if you had fucking caught a fucking glimpse of what was happening. You know what I mean? We mm. could have hooked up Dylan Farrow with some fucking investment advice. Yeah. What if Dylan Farrow made $19 million on GameStop? <laughs> what if she... Yeah. What if she's like, it's very odd doing this documentary because I just didn't make $20 million <laughs> on a very uh, crazy play, a short squeeze on GameStop. <laughs> I would love if the next uh, part of the documentary was just me and Farrow talking about Bitcoin for the entire hour. <laughs> Woody never considered other currencies. He just wanted to fuck Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's bad out there. I don't know how I feel about therapy. It's good. You were in it for a while, right? Yeah, I had to stop, though. My therapist was too old and kind of, like, out of it. Like, she was. Like, I'd be, like, telling a story, and she'd be like, what's Uber? I'm like, you're missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with what I'm trying to tell you. How old was she? I don't know. Like, an indistinguishable old. You know what I mean? Like, she was up there. Like, really up there. Probably close to 80, pushing 80. 74, 75. How'd you get her? She was, she was free. I mean, <laughs> that was that was kind of it. I what is she? Just, are you sure it was a therapist, not like an old lady in a church? You I, were just I talking wasn't to? sold. I wasn't sold. It might have been just an old woman on a park bench you were talking to. <laughs> like you're, you're like Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah. 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 Therapy. <laughs> I told her one time I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing mushrooms. She's like, that sounds nice. I'm like, well, maybe this isn't super helpful. Like, yeah. I don't know. She's like, I love mushrooms, peppers, onions. You put them in a pan. You saute them. <laughs> And if you do it right, your husband doesn't punch you in the face. <laughs> I mean, I love you. Have a, you have an elderly therapist. Yeah, she's nice though. She's nice. Had like a. I healthy, had one. I had know. one. Uh, I, I had one therapist. This is literally a fact. I had one therapist. It was an Irish guy. Um, the, the worst kind of. Is this the worst therapist? Because they're <laughs> the also Irish fucked. Man. And uh, I believe I was like, I don't know what it was. It was like. 14 years old or something, mm. and he's like, at the end of the session, like all he seemed to surmise, he was like, all right, so you're a homosexual and you love George W. Bush. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think he has the right strategies for the time we're in. I think we have to honor our commitment to the people of Iraq, <laughs> and I like to suck dick, and I don't know what why those things are all. <laughs> but at the end of the, that was like at the end of the thing, that was like his diagnosis. He was like, you like Bush, but you don't like Bush, you know? I'm like, right. He's like, all right, well, that's $97. I'm like, all right, well, I don't really think there's, I don't think there's a need for, do people go to therapy in Florida where you're from or does everyone just go to the, like, they don't, they don't even know, they wouldn't even consider that as an option. Right. Yeah. Because why go to therapy when you could go to a bar called the Land Shark? Exactly. That is the therapy. Yeah. Florida, man, you love Florida so much. I do. I love it. It's the greatest <laughs> state in the union. It's, but it's objectively not. It's probably not, no, but it is fun. It is fun. Yeah. But life's not about fun. No, it's not. Thank you. <laughs> That's what me and Dan do on the road. We're in a car, and he says something like that, and I go, but the world doesn't work like that. <laughs> and then he goes, yeah, yeah, I guess not, okay. And then we just keep driving. <laughs> He's a happy kid. I need a happy kid. I can't have another me here, you know? You know, I'm like, Tower 7. Then the other one goes, what about Tower 1 and 2? We can't have that. <laughs> we can't have that, you know? <laughs> you know? I go, Tower 7. He goes, is that a good movie? So that's why it works. Mm -hmm. He's a happy guy. Ben is a demon. I mean, Ben is as dark. At, what did, what did, could, do you remember your exact quote from the car about East Cleveland last night? Oh, I said I was trying to learn about East Cleveland on the plane. And He's the from, darkest human being. And from what I can tell, it's just like people go to East Cleveland to like murder crackheads after they rape them. That was the first thing he said five in minutes, the car, five minutes, five minutes in. 
He goes, and he has the delivery like this. Hey, guys, with the vape. He's like, people in East Cleveland are just murdering the crackheads they've raped. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what a fun... <laughs> And then we just listen to Chris Hedges' speeches driving yeah. around East Cleveland. Well, we, I don't know if you know Chris Hedges, but he's great. And he's just, <laughs> he's just this guy that just, he's just, he gets it, like kind of what's going on. And he's like, uh, we're just driving around East Cleveland and literally we're watching Chris Hedges on YouTube. And he's like, the issue before us is death. The death of societies, the collective death of the globalized world, the death of industrial. I was just driving around. When was, and I want to put this forth to the audience. Did we have a mic that we could pass around? Hey, do we have a wireless, Sam? I want to know when Cleveland was a shit. Because I know the Rockefellers lived here. And I know you guys have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I know that, like, shit was going on at one point. You guys had Millionaire's Row, You had Millionaire's Row? Yeah. (laughs) Look at those girls in the back. Yes! (laughs) Millionaire's Row! Yes! (laughs) They are not millionaires. That's the real housewives of Cleveland back there. (laughs) They winter in Cleveland and they summer in Cleveland. The Real Housewives of Cleveland. Some of them have refrigerators. <laughs> Can you imagine that sad Housewives franchise? Yeah. My name is Dawn. I live in Cleveland, Ohio. I always knew I was one of the upper crust because we had two cars, and they work. <laughs> <laughs> My husband works in a tile factory. It burnt down. Now he's in the house all the time, which is strange, but I'm still taking a girl's trip, you know? The Real Housewives of Cleveland. See how the other half lives. The, 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 the hottest woman on the Real Housewives of Cleveland would just be a diabetic who could afford insulin. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just staying alive yeah. would be like the fucking like, you know how they have those shitty like in the beginning of the show, they're like, you know, they'll be like, I don't care what anyone says about me, I'm real. Like, those dumb little intros, it would be a woman who's like, I have type one diabetes, but don't worry, boys, I can afford my needle. <laughs> the Real Housewives of Cleveland. <laughs> There's also a lot of people here that are like naturally transgender, they don't have to have the surgery, which is nice. There's a lot of naturally yeah. gender non-specific kind of orbs of flesh wandering around. <laughs> It's true. They're so it's beaten down. The just gender. Just beaten down. Yeah. What's a gender at that point? You know, who cares? Just a leathery faced old catcher's mitt crawling down the street looking for a pool of beer to dunk their head in. What's a fucking gender at that point? You just open two legs and all you see is mashed potatoes anyway. If you sell stuff online, you're definitely, you're definitely in the right business. More people are shopping online than ever. That means a lot of orders coming in and a lot of orders you'll need to ship out fast. That's why online sellers like you need ShipStation. Amazon, Epsi, or even your own website. ShipStation funnels all the orders into one simple interface. You can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. With ShipStation, small business can now access the same rates reserved for Fortune 500. It's a great product. Uh, Use my code Tim Dillon to get a 60-day free trial. Free trial, that's two months free, no hassle, stress-free shipping. 60-day free trial, two months free, no hassle, stress-free shipping. Promo code Tim Dillon. You can sell your undergarments. You can sell things you stole. Mm -hmm. You can sell garbage art that your kids make. You could just say they're dying. What a great idea. (laughs) Say your children are dying and sell their art. My mother said to me once, I'll never respect her more than the moment she said this. I was like in fifth grade. I go, Mom, I don't have the report done. She goes, just tell the teacher I died. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, but Grandma works at the school. My mom's like, right, I guess. Don't do that. (laughs) Shipstation.com, promo code Tim Dillon. Make ship happen. And then last one here. The last one, they're going to reject a lot of these, and we're going to have to cut them up. When you, if you hear them on the show, they'll be literally yeah, eight yeah. seconds. They'll take out everything. It'll just be like, ship station, good. <laughs> they literally, they will not. We have to send the ads in for approval now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's most of what my job is now, is fighting with them to leave jokes in and editing Why, things What is out. their problem? They... Why did the spoon turn? <laughs> 
Spoon was with us for a while, and then I went. Tell them, tell everyone exactly what Spoon. So Magic said. Spoon told me they said uh, that we can't do any content about uh, children getting abused or uh, uh, killed or killed. That was their words. In the ad, we can't talk about children being killed or murdered. In, in the, the ad, ad for cereal. Or sexually assaulted. Well, then I can't do it. Uh, I, I, I try. I edited I it. I mean, I'll try. I'll try to get through it, but I mean, no promises. The, the whole point <laughs> of Magic Spoon is that the kids that grew up with those cereals growing up were the types of kids whose parents went to a bar all mm. night, then came home, woke them out of a dead sleep, yeah. just started pounding on them for no reason, <laughs> and then passed out. The reward for those kids was a fucking nice... Lucky Charms breakfast. They didn't get college out of it. They got a nice breakfast, and every now and then I get to go over to their house. They'd have a black eye, true story, mm -hmm. and a bloody lip, and we'd have a great fucking cereal breakfast. <laughs> and that's what I was trying to capture. And yeah. then some blue hair fucking tech bitch. They they got really mad about the the, the part I had to edit out was uh, the, about the kid getting tied to the radiator and getting his head beaten in and then the, them running him over with the car over and over. That was brilliant. I felt hungry hearing yeah. that. I wanted a nice crunchy keto cereal when hearing about that kid being beaten and then ran over with a car. They didn't like that. And what do you, who do you talk to over there? People have to call you? Yeah, they, 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 they contact me through our ad guy, and then I have to barter with him, and then why he don't talks I, Why to don't them. they contact me? <laughs> I can include you on the calls. If oh, you want. no. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. I'll give them a fucking piece of my mind. I'm not allowed to speak to anyone. This is after the whole Airbnb fiasco. I am to be kept silent? in a room with cigarettes and I'm to be let out an hour a week and then back into the cage. I cannot speak to the world, uh, you know. But they never sued us, those ladies. Who, Mila and... Uh, yeah, no, don't no. do with the names now. Sorry. Let's not test that. Sorry. But they never sued us. No, never, never. But uh, they were happy about Rogan's comment. They were like, Joe Rogan is welcome any time at this How Airbnb. Do you know? Is that what they said? Yeah, that's what they said on their Instagram story. Someone is that what they it. said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Joe Rogan doesn't need to go to your house, you dirty dyke, because he has real fucking money, you stupid piece of shit. Nobody needs to stay in your litter box of a fucking house, you cunts. Wait, honeys, wait and watch. We're just getting started, okay? We're just getting fucking started. You fucking clam divers. <laughs> they fucking went at me on the gram like that? Yeah, and on, you didn't fucking on tell stories. me? I thought you saw it. I didn't fucking... <laughs> I'm blocked! <laughs> no, people ever, screenshot ever it. Ever since I threatened to kill them, I'm blocked. I threatened to kill them, they blocked me like children. <laughs> so wait a minute, what, what did they do? They shared that thing uh, that Rogan said when you did the podcast last about how Rogan said it was a beautiful place and he'd love to stay at a place like He's that. He's on DMT. Yeah, yeah. And they said, Joe Rogan is welcome anytime at our Airbnb. Thank you so much, Joe. Oh my God. <laughs> Whatever. I don't like this alliance between Joe Rogan and these two dykes. I don't like it. I can see it shaping up and I don't like it. Do you think I did anything wrong? No. <laughs> Dan, Dan sees a lot of my behavior and much of it you probably disagree with uh, I mean who can agree with everything that someone does you know but you're a young person what you need to understand is when you're an older person you realize the value of going to war with every person that you see We got in trouble for cutting the line at a Whataburger. We did. That was bullshit, though. We didn't even, we didn't we didn't even know the line worked. We didn't even know the line was functioning. Yeah. And it's supposed to be Texas tough guy. I'm Texas. I'm a tough guy. I'm going to shoot you. And then you go on a Facebook group like a cunt and whine about it. Yeah, Neighbors Uncensored. Yeah, Neighbors Uncensored. uncensored. Ooh, 25 You know members. what that group's about? Hard R! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what that Neighbors Uncensored in Texas is about? Letting it fly. Neighbors Uncensored. How much coded racial language is in that group? <laughs> I just want to post on Neighbors Uncensored about the new neighbors. They seem a little different. 
Does anyone share my concerns about the new neighbors? They have a lot of children. I don't know. Athletic, sure, but I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous about them darting out into the middle of the street to get a basketball, if you hear what I'm saying. It's Neighbors Uncensored in Texas. Express VPN. If you... You know what's not fair? The fact that Netflix hides thousands of shows and movies mm -hmm. from you based on your location. And, they have the ner and then they have the nerve to increase the price. That's right. They've just raised their prices once again. Now you could just cancel your subscription and protest, or you could be smart about it and make sure you're getting your full money's worth by using ExpressVPN like I do. You might not know what's on Netflix in your country is completely different from someone in the UK or Japan has on theirs. ExpressVPN. I can control which country I want Netflix to think I'm in. This is such an interesting ad because the hope. <laughs> the real hope <laughs> with this service is that you are watching Japanese Netflix. I pray, it. I'm not saying it. I'm saying I pray to God that you are using this service yes. to watch mm -hmm. Japanese Netflix. Here's the best part. It's not just for Netflix. You can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows on other streaming services too. It's super fast, works on your phone, laptop, smart TVs. So you can watch your shows on the big screen with zero buffering. What ring of hell is reserved for me after reading this ad? <laughs> Call to action. So be smart. Stop paying full. <laughs> I gotta Edit cut that, that out. Edit I gotta it cut out. that out. It's a joke. You can't make Edit it. it out. The, it's out. Edit it out. Sorry. It's all right. It's our last week on YouTube, like every week. <laughs> Hope he gets us that fuck. Like, we can Joe Rogan get us Spotify money? <laughs> it's our last. Every time, every episode, we go, this will be it. So hopefully, pa Patreon is still holding out. For now, yeah. All of their shows are wild. Patreon's wild. Mm. They've got Chapo and Come Town and us mm -hmm. and like anime. People just want to fuck cartoons. Yeah, yeah. A anime ASMR is big on there. What the fuck is that? Anime? Like a cartoon? Yeah, it's anime, but the anime characters are doing ASMR so people can, you Do know. Do you like ASMR, Daniel? No. Why not? I don't know. I mean, I don't have nothing against it. I just don't Do listen you ever to feel it. like weird when someone goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I told you this the other day. What if it was a really hot girl with my exact voice? Like, hottest girls you've seen. Big tits, everything perfect, but it's just my exact voice. <laughs> Let's I turn, practice. We're on I turn off the lights. Like, it's dark. Yeah. It's real dark. <laughs> this country is rough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's practice right now. You're on a date. Can you do it? All right. All right. So, we're, hey, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> You're from Florida? Yeah, I am. Where, where are you from? New York. <laughs> New York. <laughs> But I'm hot, like I'm yeah, really yeah, yeah. hot, huge tits. <laughs> I'm just fingering my perfectly bald pink pussy. But I'm going, Aah. So just get ExpressVPN, it helps the show. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Tim Dillon. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Tim Dillon to learn more. See what happened to those ads. We'll, we'll shave them down. Maybe we'll just put them out, but I will bleep out the that part. Well, don't we have to get we have to get approval? So we have, we're, not, we're not in a contract to get approval, but we our word is our bond, right? <laughs> what a horrible bond! <laughs> what a horrible bond! Um, should we do the wireless mic, by the way, do with we the have Q a days? wireless mic? Is so anyone working here? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I feel like we've just gotten into like an abandoned homeless. 
Give the wireless mic to someone. I don't even care who it is. Just give it to someone. Someone that looks... Uh, I, ha, I spoke to Melanie the other day, yeah. Really? Uh, what was the follow-up? You were supposed to call her a year ago, but it was 1.45 in the morning. And the, Where are the dirt bags? Yes. See, the thing about having a fan base is sometimes it's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's very, very scary. Um, I, I do speak to Melanie. Melanie's going to hopefully come out to visit us and, and podcast with us in March. Are you Melanie? <laughs> was that your qu the only question? That was it. Okay. Well, we're going to get Mel. We love Melanie. Dude, Cleveland is fucking wild. <laughs> Remember three years ago, somebody named Melanie, you were going to call her? What happened with that? Uh, I don't know. We're, we're still going to do that. We haven't found the time. Was that it? Yeah, yeah, that was it. That's my, that's my question. It's been keeping me up nights for the last year and a half, you know? I was laying on a ventilator going, what happened to Melanie? Okay, give it to someone else if you can. I apologize. Uh, when you guys come to the city, what do you actually do? Because I live here, and this is the first time I've lit, left my house in four months. Yeah, well, by the way, that's correct. <laughs> You're doing the right thing. Uh, what do we do? What did we do? Went to the fig place. What's the, what was it called? The flying fig? We went to the flying fig. All right, rain it in. Uh, it was fine. Sweet people. Loved it. Loved them. We went to uh, town hall. Yeah, we went there yesterday. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to break some bad news to you. There's not a ton <laughs> of extracurricular activities here that don't involve cooking a bunch of crystal and smoking it in an alley. I don't, don't want to walk through the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, the Ramones. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I wish it was nicer weather and I'd go walk around by the Nestle Quick Colored River or something and think about throwing myself in, which is usually... I'm usually here in the summer and I just walk by the river and imagine how many dead hookers... Oh, I want to talk about my friend Bud Munster, yes. who died. My friend Bud Munster died, and Bud is a, a character from the show. He, uh, I'm, he's the, uh, the, uh, my friend Joe's father. He, um, I got in two boating accidents with him. Uh, we used to drink together and do cocaine and take uh, pills. And he, he died, which is very sad because he'd never stopped doing that, which is not advisable. But he was the coolest guy and one of my favorite people in the world. And he said some of the funniest things that I've ever heard in my life. Uh, you know, once his wife said to him, Bud, you should get it. He was like the fun guy, the party guy. We'd all go over to their house, high school parties and shit like that. Um, he'd take people out on his boat for 48 hours straight, just drunk and throw them in the water and watch them drown and stuff. Mm. He was a good guy. He loved freedom, you know? People don't value freedom anymore. You know, these TikTok scum and mm. everyone else. But Bud... Uh, you know, his wife said to him once, his wife goes, why don't you get a fucking job? And he looked at her, he goes, what am I going to work like some loser? <laughs> Those are memories that I really, um, I cherish. He was a good, a great man. And it was very sad. He kind of, I don't know if it was OD, I think it was kind of a suicide. Yeah. And his kids were, my friends are so dark. They are the darkest. When I tell Dan's story, I mean, this poor little kid's head. But, I mean, my friends are the darkest. He texted his family, um... Uh, my life of service is over. I, let me get the exact text. It's on my phone. I wish oh, I had shit. it. First of all, he didn't serve anyone, so that's kind of hilarious. Yeah. Like my life of service <laughs> is over. Like he never did any for like anyone. But he was fun with me. Like we had fun, and that's important too. So many people forget that it's important to have fun, even with people that are doing horrible things. And he said, um, he said, like my life of service is over. And he said, uh, my earthly run, whatever he said, he goes, he's over. And his son had no idea he was serious because he used to threaten us all the time. So his son literally said, this was the last words he said to his father. His son literally texted him, okay, take care. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did it. But that's so fucking bud. Mm -hmm. That's so bud <laughs> to just end it like that fucking bud. Just when he goes, they're all going to feel like a piece of shit now. I know that's what Bud felt like right at the end. He goes, you know what? They're all going to feel like shit. Okay, take care. Oh, I will take care. <laughs> oh, I will take care. And you're going to be feeling pretty stupid. But we're all laughing. 
about it, you know? They're, they want me to do the eulogy. And I do want to, we might have to cancel the show. I might have to fly down there and do the eulogy. Because I've had so many fun times with the guy. He introduced me to Lisa's Lounge, uh, to, to uh, a place called The Helm. I spent a decade of my life in a crippling drug addiction and financial ruin. And a lot of that was with him. And without that, there's no podcast. Truly, to be honest with you, yeah. there's no podcast. I would have went to some faggoty liberal arts school. <laughs> Truly, I would have been like, I believe in the future and hope and I have attained and whatever <laughs> I would major in. Like, I'd just be like fucking, I'd be a fat activist. Yeah. Just like on the cover of a magazine with my fucking asshole out and I'd be living in Vermont and fucking I'd be a full dyke. I would have transitioned to a les. I would have split my fucking Irish dick out and just made it into a fat fucking fat French dip. <laughs> and <laughs> I narrowly avoided that fate. Okay? I could have came out of the closet easier like when I was younger and been happy and like been financially stable and had a good life and man, we would all not be here. So one of the reasons I didn't do that was because Bud Munster showed me sometimes it is more important to go out and get drunk than to heal the wounds of your childhood. You know what I mean? Sometimes, in Cleveland you get this, sometimes that line of coke is more important than seeing a shrink. Sometimes that Oxycontin is just what you need. You don't need to call an old friend. Do you understand? Sometimes being drunk on a boat is just the best thing you can do at the time. <laughs> Bud Munster was uh, a guy that went with me every day to a murder trial that changed my life. Because after the murder trial, I said, I'm going to sober up, I'm going to come out of the closet, and then I'm going to do stand-up comedy. But I was 25 years old. I was the same age as you, literally, you know? And uh, Bud came to the murder trial every day with me because he was unemployed. And he didn't have anything to do. And he loved murder trials because they're really fun. And they're interesting. And if you ever get a chance to be a juror on a murder trial, do it. Not one of these dumb things where like somebody slips and falls into Wendy's and they're like, I want 80 grand. Who cares? But so, I mean, I'm talking this was murder, torture, rape. The guy uh, stabbed her in each eye, uh, stabbed her so many times that the coroner didn't know uh, how many. They had to stop at 65. Mm -hmm. He goes, the flesh is so bruised that at 65 times we had to stop. So what I'm trying to say is this was well worth it, you know? Like this was a good, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it was a rough experience for everyone, her more so. I did a lot of sitting and judging, which is nice in a jury box, you sit and judge. And I would crinkle chips, you know, as the coroner was saying this, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, and there was a laceration on each eye. <laughs> and Bud would be sitting in the back. They thought Bud was a member of the family. They let Bud in the sentencing. <laughs> they let Bud go in the sentencing. Because they thought Bud, every day Bud mm. would come to, and then after, uh, we'd go to lunch every day, and then after the trial, we'd drive home and get drunk and then tell everyone at the local bar everything that was going on with the trial. Mm. <laughs> we'd like update them. We'd be like, oh, they fucking brought this expert in, and whatever and shit, you know. And the guy was really guilty. I don't, I'm, I'm not super sure about that, but he was like, he looked weird. And he's in jail, life plus 50, but whatevs. And Bud was a, a real big part of my life because he was there and uh, we'd go to the trial every day and uh, then he went to sentencing. We went back for sentencing. Me and Bud went back for the sentencing. The jury came back. It was like a big deal on Long Island. You could look it up. You know, don't overturn it or anything. But, uh, <laughs> And then Bud, <laughs> Bud went to the sentencing. And then we went out afterwards, a few days later, we were on his boat and we crashed into the piling of a bridge. <laughs> and we fell off the boat and then we're like both bleeding and he looked at me, he goes, you can't hang out with me anymore. And I said, why? And he goes, I'm trying to kill myself. Like he said it very seriously. He's like, I'm trying to kill myself. And then it hit me, I'm like, oh. He's trying to kill himself. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is not fun for him. He's in the depths of an addiction. But it was also a little fun. But it was like, you know? And then I forgot what I said. I probably said, okay, take care. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I don't know what I said. But, and then the last time I saw him was with you. Yeah. And, and you had met him briefly. I did, yeah. And what were your impressions? <sighs> 
it's not the most surprising thing. Yeah. You know, like he didn't seem super healthy. You know, yeah. like, you ever seen the movie Adaptation? Yes. What, what was that actor? Chris Cooper, Michael Cooper? Yeah. That guy? Chris oh, Cooper. Like, yeah, Chris this is Cooper. a Dan Carney basic bitch simulation. This is when he does. It's an Academy he, Award winning film. I know, I know. This is when Dan will kind of look like him. Have you ever seen fucking American Pie? (laughs) (laughs) You know Stifler's mom? Yeah, well. But no, I know. What do you? You kind of look like him, but like with less ambition. Bud had lived a life, a wild life. He had like sold blow with like George Young back in the day. He. He was hanging out in Fort Lauderdale when it was like called Fort Luderdale because there were so many quaaludes there. He spent a lot of time in Florida. Uh, you know, it really didn't work, like rarely worked, barely worked, didn't really work, didn't have jobs, which I always liked. I like people that don't work. I think they're fun. <laughs> have you ever gone to someone's house a Tuesday at 11 a.m. and they're there? There's something nice about that, <laughs> right? Isn't there something nice when someone's there at 11 a.m.? And they'll just like, yeah, if you want to do something? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fucking let's do it, you know? I don't want to deal with people that are like, well, I got three meetings, I got a four o'clock, I got at 7.30. No! He was always home. Uh, he was a, a, a special character, you know? And it's sad that he um, is no longer with us. But I guess in one way it's good because I don't know what the next, I don't know what like the back nine was going to be. Like, there was no shot that it was going to turn around and be good. Mm-hmm. You know? He built a house in Georgia that's, like, crazy. It looks crazy. It's, like, it's, it's like literally, like, built, like, a, like, a, like just, like, someone on drugs <laughs> built a house. Like, <laughs> that's literally what it looks like. Like, things are uneven and walls don't make sense. Like, it's literally, like, a fucking maze. <laughs> so, but it is sad. I mean, it's sad. Everyone's dying except my family. <laughs> how, how in God's name has my family escaped <laughs> what has come for everyone, you know? <laughs> Cleveland, it's, a, it's an honor to, to be here. You know, this is a real world class city. Uh-huh. You may say, hey, a large percentage of our population dresses in Reynolds wrap. (laughs) Who cares? Who cares? Many of our restaurants serve fish, which is actually just chicken or fried bread. Doesn't matter. (laughs) Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's going to turn around. I I believe believe Mm -hmm. your time is coming. You know what I... Like, Mm -hmm. I truly, truly believe that Cleveland, like, its best days are ahead of them. (laughs) But, but, I also believe that about Bud Munster. (laughs) Thank you guys so much. You're a lot of fun. Thank you guys for coming out. We got a stand-up show. You guys rock. Ben Avery, Dan Carney, follow these guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Have a good night.